Salam mat. Whoa, I forgot to turn my thing off. Salam mat pagi, salam mat malam, salam mat siang. Hey, what is up? Abkabar, how you doing? I forgot how to say that I'm doing good. I forgot. Sayo tiduk tau. I don't know. I don't know. Um, a little slower than normal getting to this. My bad. But something pretty cool, if this actually comes out when I think it will, because you know I'm recording, but it's not out. Like if you're watching it, it's out. But right now it's not out. I'm recording. Um, this will be three really cool Indonesian songs in a row. If I've got this right, if I actually release this when I intend to, then before this is Weird Genius Waka Waka, which is a super cool trippy video, and then uh, Alfie Rev of We Are Beautiful. So hopefully this will be three in a row. So you're welcome, Indonesia. What's up? Um, Californication by Red Hot Chili Peppers. I have not ever played Red Hot Chili Peppers Californication. I have played a lot of Red Hot Chili Peppers because I do, um, I grew up, you know, my teenage years loving it. Uh, one of the breakthrough moments for me was playing Under the Bridge without a capo. If you look up stuff, it says with a capo, but it's actually without a capo. And uh, here's a cat here. Puccine says, you yeah. know, you gotta go over there though. And, um, and I play a lot of bass for, uh, because Flea is such an awesome bass player. So my formative years learning bass, which I've never featured on the channel, I don't think. Oh, there is a video super long ago. You're not gonna find it. Playing some Jameer Kwai. But uh, a lot of Flea stuff, Aeroplane was my go-to. Um, the one, the song that made me want to play was uh, Give It Away. But my, the song that I had the most fun playing bass on was Aeroplane. Anyways, with that being said, let's, uh, let's watch some stuff. He's already added octaves to thicken up the sound. catch it on the next time around he was doing something nuts with the melody with the chords and the melody uh but it was so fast i really couldn't see it i think it had something to do with the open e street hi e. It's so good. It's so good. He's using the open string, the high E, a little bit. Not as much as I thought he was. He's really just maintaining his um, uh, melody stupidly well. Now he's moved the melody from strings one and two to string three, and that's it. Just adds a little contrast to the stuff. He, there are notes on string three. He could be playing on string two, but he's moved it to string three because string three. If you look at his guitar, four uh, strings six, five, four, and three are wound strings, meaning they have wrappings, and strings two and one don't. So by him moving the melody to string three, it adds a different texture that you would not get on string two or one. Also, you couldn't play it on string one, but you could play it on string two a little bit. I think he's got new strings too. They just sound new. And they look new. They're so shiny. Right there. 
He's hammering harmonies. Well, I mean, since we've seen him do this before, I hope you're not mad. I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm going to watch. I might even slow it down. I see what he's doing. We'll back it up. When he slides forward, when he slides up the neck, he's using his index finger on the D note of the, what would be the D, I'm not sure how his guitar's tuned. On the, he's using his index finger on the third fret of the second string, third fret, second string. When he slides down, he's using his pinky on the third fret of the second string. So we're hearing a repeated note, which is why I thought it was an open string. He's just, when he shifts, He's shifting and moving from his index finger on the melody to his pinky on the melody. So his hand's flying around, but actually we're hearing the same note on top. Check it out. Let's slow it down a little bit. Index. Pinky. Pinky. There you go. an interlude, an interlude section for the song. What's the difference between a bridge and an interlude? A bridge actually connects two sections, like an actual bridge does. It connects two pieces of land. So a lot of times you have a bridge between them. Uh, it can be between any common section, so between anything that recurs. So you could have a bridge between the pre-chorus and the chorus, or between the chorus and back to the verse. But I'm calling this an interlude because I think it only happens once. It only happens once, and it's a radical departure from the music interlude. That's more the Elite style after the last couple of videos. That's the Elite style that I just love, I love to hear. And now I'm a little torn, because typically what I do is, if I see some stuff that I think I can illuminate, then I, I show you some stuff on guitar. I don't really think I have anything for that. I think he did such an awesome job and a lot of it was so um, weirdly constructed, uh, which is a fancy way of saying that. I'm not sure what I see that I can just show you on the, on the spot. Uh, let's do, let's do something, right? Let's do at least something. It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be very low level, but let's do it. Let's move this mic. Um, and just uh, a harmony thing. 
What am I gonna do? Looks like G7. All right, so wait, that's not good. How about this? That's like a line. He did something like that in there. Right? So now how do we make a harmony? That's pretty crunchy. That's for like a G7. I'm not sure if that's what he played. So you could get... So you're just adding an extra harmony note to the melody. And then just hammer it on, pull it off. So there I'm resolving to C. Like I said, I don't think I really have anything to, to show you. Um, oh, well, let's do one thing that hopefully you can hear through this mic, which is my guitar is set up like his, where I have four wound strings and two that are not wound. A really easy way to know if your strings are wound is you take a pick or a fingernail, but I don't want to wear my fingernails. If you slide your pick up and down a string and you don't hear anything, it's not wound. So string one, eh, nothing. String two, nothing. String three, hear that? That's the windings. That's a really easy way to see if your string is wound. You can also just look at it. If you look really close, you can see little spinny things. So let's take a melody. Let's do something really simple because I need it to be simple. Um, I can use, I'll use my fingers. Simple. C, D, E. But if I play it on string three, it gives me a different timbre because the string diameter is thicker and it's got the windings. Right? Compare that. Especially if I go bright. And then on string three. Much more mellow. So a lot of times when you're fingering a song or a melody or you're making an arrangement, um, assuming you can play the same thing in two different places, that's what informs your decision making is do you want... You go to the higher strings if you want things to be bright. And you go to lower strings if you want them to be darker. In fact, uh, let's do on the next string. Now we're string four. So a string four. String three. String two. And um, it's one of the things that sucks about guitar, but is amazing, is that we have a lot of notes to learn in the same spots. Whereas on a piano, there's only one note. When you hit a key, there's only one note on a piano that makes that note. On a guitar, there's many spots to play the same note, which is daunting to learn the guitar, but it gives you a lot of expressive um, options. Well, holy cow, we did it. I didn't think I was going to have anything to say, but I ended up having something to say, which is why you always got to give yourself a chance. You never know what you came up with, and I came up with something. Cat, not for you. Before she knocks things over and fucks things up, I love y'all, but I gotta go. Meow. No.